What's up, VC? I'm Kieran. Welcome back. Um, and welcome if you're tuning in for the first time. Got a set up here for some needle drops or to be able to play music very easily um, with a turntable in front of me. So um, I used to do needle drops back in the early days of videos, but I've gotten away from it. Um, I just found it annoying, always like with the turntable up against the wall, really annoying to be like reaching behind constantly. So um, anyway, I just have this idea and we'll see if I, how often I do it. Um, I'm gonna show some new arrivals, basically what I've picked up uh, since probably early December. So first up, um, well, I'll share with, I'll get to, um, I'll get to where this record came from, but what we're listening to is Silk Stockings. Um, Donde está el mercado? Where is the market? Canadian jazz record from the late 80s. Completely unfamiliar with it. Okay, Christmas gift from my brother-in-law. Thank you very much, Mark John. Um, amazing gift, belated Christmas gift. We exchange gifts um, a little bit after Christmas, but this is Miles Davis at Fillmore West, Black Beauty. I had a few records from this period, but definitely not. There's several that I'm missing. This was one of them. I'd never heard it. Um, four sides of just burning electric um, jazz fusion um, live. You know, it's it's heavy, but um, when you're in the right mood, it hits you. It hits you. Um, just yeah, it's I don't know I even know how to describe it. You you know if you know. Um, it's not for everyone. Um, when I first got it, I was so excited that I just threw it on the turntable in the living room um, when I was about to make dinner with the girlfriend and that I was like, oh, this is definitely not, it's not gonna go well. Um, and not really the type of thing um, that you can just put on as background music. It, it requires some intense um, focus, um, kind of getting into the, the zone per se as they were during these performances. Um, so this is a Japanese pressing as, I don't know if it was probably only ever released um, in the 70s as a Japanese pressing, but this is the OB strip. I don't know about pressings for these, if there's, you know, I'm sure there was multiple. I don't know about which one this is, but this is what the label looks like on CBS Sony, pretty cool. Um, different looking label, and then it came, has this nice insert with all the Miles Davis albums that I have, most of them, but not all of them. And, uh, Playing on here, obviously, have Miles, um, Steve Grossman, Chick Corea, Michael Henderson, Jack DeJanet, and Erto Morera. So I'm sure that this is, you know, familiar to most of you since Miles is one of the most popular musicians around here, jazz musicians, but yeah. Okay, so let's get into pickups. I'll show you just quickly some new records I've picked up. Uh, these Analog Africa comps. I just got these recently. Um, one is Durdur Band from Somalia, uh, volumes one and two. I highly recommend these comps. There's a lot to digest here. I still need to get into them. This Essibon uh, special, I think he was the producer. I'm not sure. Um, I have to open this up and I haven't even cracked the gatefold on this. Um, Ghana Music Powerhouse, this is one of my when I was playing this in the car um, non-stop, I couldn't get enough of it. So highly recommend this, this comp um, from Analog Africa. Not things that you're ever gonna track down originals of, well, not me anyways, or most of us. And then this is a modern soul record that I really enjoy. Um, band posted it, I didn't know them. My cousin actually has their records and for some reason I'm sure he sold me about them, but I just had never listened. Band posted this. Um, a couple weeks ago, I guess, and I uh, picked it up and great for when you have guests over and you're entertaining. Really enjoyable, Modern Soul on Coal Mine Records. Okay, so where this record that we're listening to came from is a local shop here um, called Encore that I've been, I've been, I shared in my last video a bunch of records from them. Um, the uh, the guy that works there or had started working there, I guess, the beginning of last year or, um, was pulling out records from the basement and letting me look through them before they hit the shop. So I picked up a few um, really nice titles, those Blue Note kind of reissues that like 
Liberty Presses and stuff that I shared um, were all from there. So he messaged me and said, um, I'm leaving. I gave my two weeks, I got a job. Um, I'm gonna go through, if you're interested, I'll go through the basement and pull out some stuff and you can look through and see if anything interests you. Um, so I did that, um, went there, checked it out. Tons of great records, gave him a few. He priced them up, I brought in some stuff for trade, um, which I had done before as well. And uh, that was that. This is actually one that I picked up before this whole whole batch. So this is a, a mono, UA mono. This was kind of like from that the, the other ones that I showed, but I picked it up slightly after. Detroit, New York Junction, that Jones, super clean UA mono reissue. Okay, so the ones I just got recently, I'm talking about like last last weekend. So this was the one I haven't been able to stop playing. I was most excited about when I saw it. George Ben, Forza Bruta. Instantly one of my favorite albums. I'd heard it before, um, but I hadn't listened in years. I had never had a physical copy. I just, you know, played it um, digitally and incredible incredible and I've played this for a few people that aren't necessarily into music and just it's captivating everyone is like oh this is really good I'm like yeah this is one of the best Brazilian albums um, of all time not that I'm a Brazilian music expert but just simply amazing this was originally released in 1970 first stereo reissue issue 1975 this is later 1985 or somewhere between 75 and 85 um, so not an OG, but not something I've ever come across and I don't know if I will again. So um, didn't feel it was right to, <laughs> to not get it, um, knowing what a kind of essential album it is. Um, other stuff. So yeah, the, the one that we're listening to is a record that uh, I don't, is a local artist and I didn't know him at all. And the, the guy um, working there who, who's also a musician, has actually played with him and said, I think you would like this. So he knows my taste um, after, you know, a, a year of, you know, pulling out records, less than a year, but let's say six months of pulling out records and talking music and playing stuff. And um, so he's like, I think you'd really like this. It's a, he's a local cat, he's still around. Um, and I listened to it once through and now I'm playing it here for you. And yeah, pretty dope. The artist that so this is called Silk Stockings, but I think it's Rainer Weens. I'm not sure how you say that properly, but. And uh, there's only three copies, ne never sold on Discogs, three copies um, for sale, one in Canada, two in Europe. It's very strange. So this is another one. Mehdi, if you're watching, you're the one that pointed me in the direction of this. And I realized after when I saw you again that you actually wanted this, I thought you had it, but anyway, I was checked it out. The track D Trad, that's what. Um, Cecil Taylor live at the Cafe Montmartre in Copenhagen in November 1962. Really, really nice sounding. Um, when I checked it out, I haven't spun this yet. I might do that uh, actually before dinner tonight. Um, this is a stereo press fantasy. I don't know if it's a first stereo press or not. I haven't looked too closely into it. Um, Actually, this guy, Mehdi, who I don't know if you're watching, but uh, he happened to come into the shop while I was looking through the crate. And so he was looking through it with me and he recommended that Cecil Taylor. And he also, this is one that I had skipped past. Um, and he's like, you should check that out. It's a really good record. And it really is. <laughs> um, thank you. So this is Dr. Alimentado, best dressed chicken in town. I don't know anything about this guy. I'm not like, I haven't research and I'm not a reggae expert at all. I you know, have a small selection of reggae. Um, there is some King um, Lee, Lee Scratch Perry production on here, King Tubby. Um, and this is a compilation. I don't really know. I guess they were all released as singles, but it's recorded at different places, different engineers, um, 1973 to 76. And this was released in 78. So I guess it was, you know, different tracks. Um, through the years that they've put together for an LP. And this is really good. And on that note, I will, for fun,
switch it up. What's annoying is when I get records home, they're usually in these regular sleeves, which is easy. Um, what's annoying is when I clean them and you know, I put them in the, the sealable sleeves, which I, I know people find annoying and I don't find it really that annoying, but for this purpose of needle dropping during a video would be, is quite annoying to have to open it and it makes a sound, but I'll just give you guys a little taste of what this sounds like. Sure this one will get picked up by the copyright police, but who knows? Okay, other things I grabbed from there. So already, you know, the George Ben, this reggae record, um, then the the big one that I was kind of shocked um, to see in there, Chicago Gangsters, I Choose You on Gold Plate Records. So I have their other one, um, and it's actually one of the first kind of rare records that I found, or I didn't know it at the time, but the cover is very similar looking to this um, in style. Um, and uh, so I picked it up in England actually for, you know, very, very cheap. And when I got back, I was like, oh, this is actually kind of a, an expensive rare record, especially at the time when I was first, first buying records, I knew nothing about it. So yeah, I'd always kind of wanted this one. And there's a track on here that I Choose You, Willie Hutch song. Unreal, the, the, it's a nine minute track. The first five, four minutes are instrumental, which are great, but when the vocals kick in, it's just for me, an incredible soul song, super moving. Um, check it out, you can hear it on streaming services and stuff like that. It won't do it justice if I just quickly like play it for you. Um, you gotta blast it loud, that's all I can say. So super pumped to find this. What I found, what I didn't, Realize as I looked and there's, um, there's, um, who's playing, was it Phil Upchurch is playing guitar on here. And there's also, um, who's the guy that he has that record with on Kudu, uh, Tennyson Stevens, and then Richard Evans playing bass. So I went to look at the other one, the second, their second album, and, uh, there's no Phil Upchurch or Tennyson Stevens, still Richard Evans. So... Um, I guess the band switched up a bit between the first and second albums and this was released as well with a different title and different cover I can't remember the name of the other one, but I don't know which one came out first It seems they were released in the same year. So I don't know what the story is behind that Chicago gangsters. I choose you gold plate records A rare occurrence finding a Fela record Fela and Africa 70 Calakuta show don't know the story behind this. This is like a, you know, one of the many US Makosa issues of it. As usual, all Fela, just pure fire. I wouldn't say this one stands out as one of the better ones, but I can never get enough of, of listening to Fela Kuti. And lastly, um, when I went back to finish up the deal, he, um, he was like, oh, I found this record. Probably, in, I think it must have been one of the crates he had shown me a few months ago and I, I hadn't, you know, didn't catch my eye, not something I knew. And he's like, I was spinning this today and I think you'd really like it. So I checked it out and it's un, unbelievable. Uh, I've only, there's two, four sides here. Two of them, when I was sampling it, didn't strike me as, you know, as much. I wasn't like taken away by them. They seemed a bit more challenging, I would say, or, they were just so different than the other ones, which right away I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. They have a funkier side to them. Um, I will spin them and um, maybe I'll love them as well. It's just, they're so different. But the two sides that really caught my ear, I have played and I will. they will get a lot of play. So this is Centipede, September Energy. This is a Keith um, Tippett project and it's a huge, huge band. I'm sure most of you know this, but I, I didn't know this. Uh, I tend to, what I do is when I'm looking up a record, I'll see, I'll search it on Instagram. Sometimes it can be difficult if the title, you know, represents a lot of things and there's, it's been hashtagged for a million other things, but I'll just see through hashtags who's posted the record. If it's people I know, other collectors, you, um, that are, you know, have said something about it. It's kind of a, a gauge, especially now a lot of shops don't have 
listening stations and stuff because of COVID. So it can be a bit trickier. This shop did have a listening station, but I'll still, um, you know, see who had posted it. And Jeff at Mostly Records had posted it. So the musicians that I recognize on here, Ian Carr on trumpet, um, doubling flugelhorn, and uh, Dudu Pakwana as well on here. And Rob, Robert Wyatt on drums. So yeah, check that out if you don't know. It's kind of like, it's like jazz, rock, proggy, uh, there's there's definitely some like chanty, gospely vocals on one of the tracks, which I really, really enjoy. Um, they're all sideline tracks. I don't even know if the tracks have different names or they're all just, just music, um, but they all take you on a, on a trip. They're not like, you know, radio songs. They're as a lot of kind of like fusion and uh, prog songs do. So yeah, check that out. So the rest here, oh, stay tuned for a grail at the end um, because that, I'm saving the best for last year. So I'll just go through these ones quickly. These are local pickups from various shops, Tantuato, uh, Sonorama, Death of Vinyl. I got a little something from everywhere here almost. Les Change, these are all the shops that I frequent, you know, regularly. This is Groove Merge on Groove Merchant, New Groove, Groove Homes at the Oregon. Got a couple Oregon records here. Um, Red Onion, no, this is not Red Onion. This is, yeah, this is has the track Red Onion on it. Killer, Jazz Funk. I keep saying I, I'm not gonna buy any more Jazz Oregon albums, but I tend to always end up with some when I find them. Um, another Jazz, uh, another organ player, not someone I'm familiar with, I knew this very recognizable cover and it's on King produced by James Brown there's some really nice stuff some of this is very I don't know a little boring but there's definitely some some fun funky groovy stuff hard drums um, but yeah so this is Bill Dodgett honky tonk pop honky tonk popcorn um, I listened to this once and I was like yeah it's it's good it's fun but it's you know instrumental organ music with you know funked up a bit but yeah i'm sure some people really like it it was cool but didn't blow me away soul and salvation dizzy gillespie um this is from the 70s on tribute records i think this is a canadian pressing i don't know if it's on tribute i don't know that label at all if it's on also on tribute in the u.s but this is fun it's a good kind of dizzy embracing the the funkiness in the 70s, um, worth checking out. This, really cool. I, I didn't, I picked that one up. This is probably, that's probably the first one of this whole batch that I grabbed. And I haven't spun it since I got it. I spun it a few times the week I got it, but this was just Unreal Record. So this is a one-off duo record. I'm sure most of you know this. If you're, you know, you've been buying records for a while, I knew the cover really well. I just a record use. I had seen people post. Um, this is kind of like psychedelic, folky soul. Um, a lot of different sounds on here. And um, is there any? Yeah, there's some like session musicians that I, some people I know. Chuck Rainey, Grady Tate, Ralph McDonald, Joe Beck. Oh, Keith Jarrett plays on here. Richard T. Um, Myrna Summers, and the. I think we have one of her albums. Anyway, I'll give you a little. play out but definitely recommend you seek this out uh, it's on cotillion so major label um, Atlantic subsidiary but not you know a record that was 
it's too, you know, popular, I guess. Um, but it's findable, and uh, I'm really glad that I found a copy locally. Great, great record. Definitely one of my favorite of the batch here. Um, some other stuff, a couple of not this. I wasn't expecting it to be great, and overall it's okay. But there's moments on it that I really, really like. This is Amina Claudine Myers trio, The Circle of Time. Definitely not as good as her, her um, previous record. I think it was her previous one on Leo. Um, song, song for E, or I can't remember what the exact title is. Um, but still, some nice, nice stuff on here. It's from a few years later, from like '83, '84 on Black Saint. This I grabbed because it was on Foro. Steve Lacey, Alvin Curran, Frederick Rizuski. I think one of the tracks, one of the sides is just solo. I struggled with this, I'll give it another chance, but you know, I'm always curious, you don't see stuff on Poro too often, but I struggle a bit with Steve Lacey's tone. Um, not always for me. There are some records of his that I do enjoy, uh, but this is a really cool cover. But yeah, uh, I need to sit with that one a bit more and see if it connects. Cheap Heat, Pat Britt, Star Song. It's one I'd seen posted, you know, at some point on Instagram. Um, this one will only set you back five, 10 bucks. And um, nice kind of modal, uh, modal stuff. The cover definitely doesn't do it justice. It's on Catalyst. Don't know any of these musicians. Gary Barone, Dwight Dickerson, Alan Jackson, Will Bradley. Definitely a very enjoyable listen. This is was a nice, nice little find from this past week at a low, another, um, like the shop that I, you know, got those records from, it's a book, used bookstore and record store. Um, this one is another neighborhood used bookstore, record store, but like a quarter of the size I would say, or half to a quarter, it's definitely much smaller. Um, and, but they've gotten some really interesting records there. This one is the second record I've gotten on this label um, from that store. And I asked him if they're from the same place, he said no. Um, but I wasn't really clear on what, he, he didn't seem completely sure on where the provenance of them. But this is Robertino Silva Bataria on, uh, the label is Carmo. And, um, and sorry, my battery was dying. Um, and yeah, this is a Brazilian kind of fusion record from 83, um, percussion record, fusion, um, there's synths, I believe, sax. Um, trying to see the... Yeah, so soprano sax, guitar and synthesizers, um, percussion and electric piano. I just got this, I spun it once, really enjoyed it. I'll definitely gonna dig into this some more. He plays on, I looked him up and I, I was familiar with the name, but not too familiar. And, and like I said, Brazilian music, not something I, I don't know all the musicians and stuff like that. And I only have a very, very small selection of Brazilian records. It's a whole other world to explore, but he's played on a few of the records I have and every want, I don't have a ton, but I have a bunch of Brazilian records in my want list and he's on almost every one of them, um, which is crazy. So he played on some ridiculous number of, you know, albums i looked on discogs it was like 350 or 450 something crazy so and i posted uh or in the one of the posts i did on instagram the other day you could see that record in it and someone commented from brazil saying that he they had recognized him in a restaurant and said hi and um he was super thrilled that someone someone had uh had recognized him okay so i said i saved the best for last uh two records from uh an instagram you know someone i met through instagram who's a, a fellow record collector music lover and one of these i had got a while ago from him he lives in toronto so he was holding it for me and um another collector friend from toronto was nice enough to bring it when he came to montreal um so a record i'd wanted for a long time the Visitors Neptune. Um, Earl and Carl Grubbs um, are called The Visitors. Um, this is their first first album they didn't have. The only one I was missing is the original on Cobblestone. There is a, a second later pressing 1980 on Muse. Great modal jazz, you know, channeling Coltrane. 
Um, if you don't know any of their records, check them out. They're all worth seeking out. And the best for last, this is from the same, same guy who was holding that Neptunes for me. Um, posted this up that he wanted to sell it to a local collector. Um, someone to see, you know, he was willing to let it go. A record that I have, didn't think I would ever own a, you know, a, a, not that this is an OG OG, but a vintage copy of. Um, and that is Sun Ra Sleeping Beauty on L Saturn, or on Saturn, sorry. Um, so that it doesn't, there's some with like crazy artwork and, you know, different stuff, things. On the cover, this has this really nice paste on Sun Ra and his orchestra with the logo. And it's on the, um, as you can see, yellow label. Um, so Sleeping Beauty on one side, and then you have Springtime Again and Door of the Cosmos on the other side. Just a great place to, if you don't know Sun Ra, this is a great place to start because it's very accessible. It, still edgy but it's funky it's deep it takes you away um to space i struggle with some of the really really heavy sun raw stuff and i know i'm not the only one um but this one is this is a special special sound and and energy and and album if you want to call it that um definitely worth checking out sleeping beauty by um sun Ron. there is a really nice uh, art yard reissue that you can get um, still, so check that out. So yeah, that's it for this big stack of records. I might have forgot one or two, but that's the, you know, the Grail, the Sun Ra, the stuff I got from the, the basement of that shop, and then a few other odds and ends um, that I've picked up over the past month. Hope everyone's well. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, at Needle Groove Vinyl, and I'll be back soon with another video. Peace.